Welcome to Kalamazoo Lively Arts, the show that takes you inside Kalamazoo's vibrant, creative community and explores the people who breathe life into the arts. Support for Kalamazoo Lively Arts is provided by the Irving S. Gilmore Foundation, helping to build and enrich the cultural life of greater Kalamazoo. On this episode of Kalamazoo Lively Arts, the Kalamazoo Institute of Art hosts the High School Area Show, where many of the young artists are awarded college scholarships. We visit the Kalamazoo Institute of Arts Fair and speak to many wonderful artists. But first, Stephen Dupuy with the Edison Neighborhood Association and more speaks to the vast number of projects that support his community. Well, today I'm talking with Stephen Dupuy, who is the artistic director at Dormouse Theater, and he's also the executive director at the Edison Neighborhood Association. What else are you? I know you're a lot of things. You wear a lot of hats. You know, I, I'm a partner. I, I'm, a, I'm a dog dad and I'm all of that wonderful stuff as well. Yeah, I am just a, a lover of Kalamazoo, a bit of an activist, somewhat outspoken sometimes, an advocate for sure. Yeah, I, I, that's probably enough. Yeah. You, you wear lots of hats, like I said. So when you think about the Edison neighborhood, to me, it's really vibrant. But how would you describe the neighborhood? I always think of it as really urban and really uh, rich culturally. You know, a lot of neighborhoods are, can be really segregated in terms of where you find the culture. But Edison, it's really weaves throughout. The vibe for me that I get, people are into the art. You have a lot of artists and budding artists in the Edison neighborhood. Why do you think that is? Well, and first and foremost, it's still one of the most affordable places to live. And when you think about artists, like I think about me, I'm a, a, a starving artist sometimes. And I think, you know, like that culture piece plays into that as well. I think that in, inspires artists to, uh, to have that around them. And so they, you've put on a lot of different events. You know, the, the Edison Neighborhood Association um, has been a part of or supported or put them on themselves. What are some of those events? We do a community social every month, and that's the last Saturday of the month. And we theme that differently and partner up with different folks. Uh, we just did a bike the queue uh, with Open Roads and an organization called Mode Shift, which advocates for, you know, biking and walkability. We have been doing bucket drumming with Carolyn Koble, and that has been really cool. But you also do this other event that I, I think is so much fun. It's the Quarterly Art Crawl. Yes, we call it WAC because it is the Washington Avenue Arts and Culture Crawl. And I want to point out that it's Arts and Culture Crawl. There's a map for that, and it goes, there's a very specific route to take. And we're connecting like the strategic, you know, boring part about it. The back end of it is that we're connecting different business nodes in the neighborhood. You know, anybody could drive there, but the, the map that we're using is about biking and walking and, and getting people sort of more comfortable getting out and, and just walking around. And yeah. And you get to visit, you get to visit with some of the, the, the owners of, of the stores and you're out there, you know, with your community. You have your hands, as I said, you know, earlier into so many different things. I mean, you, you definitely have your your pulse on, on, on the neighborhood. Dormouse Theater is, is really a big place for you. You're the artistic director there, right? Yes. So yeah. what, what does that entail? And tell me about what the Dormouse Theater brings to the neighborhood. Wow. Well, so the Dormouse, that's obviously my passion project. And to me, is uh, it's like a lot of things where it, it's changed and evolved. You know, I feel like I set up a lot of goals for myself and I accomplished a lot of those goals. And then it, it has evolved into more of a space where multiple artists, different mediums that come and perform. So originally it was, you know, my passion project. I do performing arts and particularly we produce sketch comedy shows with a sort of a social angle to them. But now we have all sorts of different live music. We have got an all ages pub show coming up this weekend. There's hip hop music that we host. We host dance troops and belly dance and urban dance and just stuff that I didn't necessarily expect was just gonna filter into the space, but it kind of just evolved there and 
the very improv thing to say was yes and kind of my approach to my directorship at the, the neighborhood association for edisa jazz fest for instance people came to me and said you know they want to do this thing and i was like yes and this and talk about how this can be a bigger more culturally relevant thing yeah and 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 how do you curate the talent how do you find the talent that that you present some of it comes to me kalamazoo is such a great community for uh working artists you know it there's statistics on how it's the most affordable place for working artists to live and all of that. So it's really, it's really just that, that web of folks. You meet one person and then the next thing you know, you've met another person. And I had somebody come to me recently and say, I want to start an open mic night. And I just said, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Let's work together on that open mic night that you want to cultivate. I just find that, you know, a good leader just knows when to get out of the way. You're there to support, you're there to, you know, to cheerlead and push and offer advice. Maybe sometimes a shoulder to cry at or, you know, what you do is you just, you say, yes, that sounds amazing. How can I help make that happen? So what's your goal? Like what, when you wake up in the morning, what do you, what, do you, what gets you jazzed up? Oh, so I advocate a lot for folks in the neighborhood. Uh, that's a little more serious part of the job. They're is some disinvestment that's happened in the neighborhood for a long time. There are certain things that get me jazzed up about just quality of life things that are not being addressed or shoved under the rug. Obviously art motivates me. I'm obviously a huge supporter of art. At the Dormouse, I do have the opportunity to like produce our own sketch. I get to direct, I get to perform, and that's super fun. I forget how much I love it until I'm, you know, until I'm in it and I'm doing it. Tell me a little bit about um, the Edison Jazz Fest. What's what's in store? What What's the plan? So Jazz Fest this year has all been um, brick and mortar sessions um, and they've been doing that at the Clover Room. And so they're bringing in, uh, they do like a Wednesday night jam every, every pretty much every Wednesday where they have somebody plays and then uh, other jazz musicians are welcome to come and jam um, after the performance. And then they're also bringing in some real great world-class talent every once in a while. Steven, thank you so much for talking with me here to do today and uh, doing what you do. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Well, today I'm talking with Kimberly Earnshaw, who's the former director of Advancement and Marketing for the Kalamazoo Institute of Arts. Thank you so much for talking with me here today. My pleasure. Hi. Well, I know it's, you know, you're all, you're all red because I know, I know you're coming <laughs> off the Kalamazoo Institute of Arts Fair, right? Tell me yeah, all about 90 that. 90 degree days, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was it like? Oh, it was so much fun. 72nd year of the uh, Arts Fair. It started so long ago, it was called the uh, Clothesline Arts Fair. And so they would hang clotheslines between those great trees in Bronson Park and like clip all their artwork on. So it's a little more advanced than that now. Um, uh, over 125 artists and food trucks and thousands of visitors. And it, it sort of comes together with all the other activities like the Duda and Art on the Mall and Pride Festival and all those things that happen. So such a cool event for the city. but really great for the artists and the really eclectic mix of media that they do and take on and from ceramics to glass to metal sculpture to fiber to painting and guitar it was just amazing and so it was a great weekend huh but it was not um rainy and it was not muggy so we went <laughs> And you have at the Kalamazoo Institute of Arts, I think it just wrapped, it was a high school show. That was what caused me to call you because I thought it was so intriguing Because because you look at this art and you like never know who's gonna take off. The High School Area Show has been around now easily decades, 40 years of doing the High School Area Show. Yeah, it's amazing. And we, it's a jury show. So artists, um, these high school students submit their artwork and then they're juried in by a professional artist, but it's anywhere from ninth to 12th grade. So it can be up to about a hundred art students that can make it maybe even 85. Wow. Um, this year we had, uh, almost $2.8 million in scholarship oh offered to these art students. Oh I know, right? Gosh. Amazing. And even so students can win in certain categories. And if they don't 
win. And this year, if they didn't win in a category, um, we actually had scholarships for all the students. So every student got some kind of scholarship to either carry them through a summer program um, or university to go to art school full time, whatever they're pursuing. It's really amazing. It was absolutely phenomenal. And when you're talking about young people, like they don't even know how good they are yet, right? A lot of times we hear that a lot. We hear people that will say, because we have the art school as well here. Right. And we will always hear people say, uh, oh, I'm not an artist. <laughs> <They're> like, oh. <laughs> and I think that's the amazing thing of things like the Young Artist Show or the high school area show is it starts to instill this, so I'm hanging on the walls of a museum. Yes. That's where they go, maybe I am an artist, or you're gonna hear it enough from people around you or other artists who say you are an artist. Look right. at what you're doing. Yeah. And even if it's not hanging on our walls, if you're creating art, you're an artist. Yes, right, exactly. Why do you think, like, what is it that, that makes art so important to a community, especially like Kalamazoo? You know, okay, so I have a theory on this, right? So yeah. uh, I think that art, as we all always say, art's very interpretive, right? Like you see what you see. I can look at something and go, I see this. And someone else will look at it and go, I don't see that at all, yeah, right? right? So it's very different. And because art is very eclectic, there are so many variations of media that you are working in. So whether that's, as we said before, whether that's photography or drawing or sculpture, but I think the most important thing that brings art to people is when in some form they see themselves reflected in that artwork or in the artist that created it, right? So I think you might look at a piece of artwork and go, I really, that's what I remember growing up. I, yeah. That looks like my backyard growing up. Or they relate to the artist because the artist looks like them, talks like them, sounds like whatever that is. I. I kind of feel like that's what it is, that there's something for everybody, no matter what. Now, did you mention that there was one that had like a farm scene? There was this farm scene that you really liked. What, what was yeah. that all about? Yeah, there's a great piece. And I, I won't be able to tell you what the name of the piece is. Um, but uh, recently, the uh, director of education did a tour, a school tour. And... Um, that was the piece that she landed on at the very end of this school tour with this, the students who had come in. And one of the students said, I really want to thank you. I love this piece of artwork. It's because that's what my day looks like. I get up every day and I'm on the farm before I go to school and I'm doing my chores and I'm working and doing the things I need to do. And I see myself in that artwork and I did not think I would see what my life looks like in the museum. And that was cool. I didn't know this until recently. You offer classes, right? Ceramics, a creative writing, drawing, and that's for the community. Yes, we have a uh, Kurt Newman Art School is under the great umbrella of the KIA. And we probably an average of about a thousand students a semester. And so, and it is children through to adults. So we do have kids day classes like on a Saturday when it's the school year and during the summer we have kids camps and and it doesn't matter your skill level there's beginning classes and like you said ceramics or painting drawing jewelry making glass making weaving right um and even we do yoga uh we did sign language and so there's just such a great mixture and we even have scholarship applications that that individuals can apply for to help aid them in, in coming to a class. And um, yeah, so it's pretty cool. Kimberly, thank you so much for talking with me here today. I know it was rough coming off that heavy weekend because I know it was crazy busy, but I appreciate you taking the time here with me. Thank you so much for inviting us. Hi everyone, I'm Kylie Ambu and we're here at the Kalamazoo Institute of Arts Fair in Bronson Park. There are dozens of unique artists out today. We're talking with a few about what makes their craft so special. Let's go.
I'm here with Mike from Stuff Brain Studio, and I have to say, I feel like I'm inside a comic book right now. Oh, that's with awesome. all this great stuff. Talk to me about what you got going on. So I do a lot of illustration, screen printed posters. Uh, I like to pop up at events like this and just kind of share my art with everybody. Wonderful. And what are you especially proud of in here? Oh boy, so screen printing is a very hands-on, tactile process. So posters like this, each color serves as a screen. Lining them up is kind of burdensome sometimes. I bet. So anytime I get that final color and things are lined up the way they should, it's it's really awesome. Wonderful. And everything kind of fits a, a color scheme in here. It's very nice the way you've laid it all out. Do you do that on purpose? Yeah, so uh, in screen printing and in art in general, having constraint has been helpful for me. So limiting my color palette really allows me to focus less on which colors to use and just more of what art to make and to keep making more art. How did you get into screen printing? So screen printing kind of fell backwards into it through a uh, first job I had out of college. I, I did sales for a t-shirt printing company, learned about the ins and outs of screen printing on apparel, and then I learned it was a lot cheaper and more affordable and more creatively fulfilling for me to print on paper. So I just kind of went down that rabbit hole and haven't stopped since. When you go around um, to all of the different fairs, do you ever meet you know fellow artists along the way that you get inspiration from or maybe just make a friendship out of? Absolutely. Uh, so a lot of the stuff in my booth was inspired or encouraged by other artists as far as logistical setup things you know hey these certain type of weights or these this certain type of netting I've had friends helping me all along the way and I met them through screen printing wonderful what would you say to future artists who might see screen printing and say oh I want to get involved there's definitely a lot of resources around like the Kalamazoo Institute of Arts I took a class there years ago um, other people like myself have studios the equipment can be a little um, cost prohibitive to jump into fully on your own, but reach out to somebody that's screen printing in your area and just see if they're willing to show you. It's a medium that not enough people know about, and so we want to spread that knowledge as much as we can. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for educating us on it. Of course. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm here with Christine Zinn from Zinn Fire Pottery, and you are a ceramics artist with a lot of great stuff to show Thank here you. today. Absolutely. Talk with me about you know what you make and how you do it. Uh, well, my stuff is mostly wheel thrown, uh, so I have a, a pottery studio in my basement, and uh, it's uh, stoneware clay, and I sit at my pottery wheel and throw it, and then it's a process of firing it in a kiln in my garage, and then uh, playing around with some glazes. Uh, my glazes are commercial, so I don't mix my own uh, for a couple reasons, space, and I do have another full-time job, so um, I just play around with glazes till I get something I really like. Wonderful. And these all look like they've taken, you know, hours to create. They're gorgeous. How do you balance your artwork with, like you said, a full-time job and full-time life in general? Uh, it's tough sometimes, but I usually spend probably three, four hours at night after work working on it, and then especially on the weekends. Uh, and preparing for a show several hours. And like you said, you know, you go out to these different fairs. Have you met friends? Like, have you had kind of a community of people when you go to a these? A few. I haven't actually been doing this that long, but yes, definitely we meet people wherever we go, and that's probably the, the most fun part of this. When did you kind of get started into coming to the scene? About seven years ago. I went through a midlife change, I guess you'd call it, and I decided I wanted to do something for myself, something that I'd always had a passion for that I wanted to learn and decided I was gonna do it, and that's where it started. Yeah, you picked a beautiful hobby. And when you mm -hmm. talk about starting something new, I think it, it sounds so daunting to a lot of people, especially when you have your life figured out, you know, you think maybe you know what you like in life. What would your advice be to like a budding artist who might say, oh, I've always wanted to get into that? Go for it. Mm -hmm. Just try it. Um, don't be afraid to practice. Uh, for me, it was a four-week class at a community studio, and then um, just practicing. I bought a wheel and watched a lot of YouTube and a lot of uh, online tutorials and practice. Wonderful. Well, you heard it here. Go for it. Do it. Thanks so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. I'm here right now with Richard Franklin from Richard Franklin Fine Arts. Now, yes, I know that you are a painter, yes. and I know that you're from Texas. Yes, what's, what's a Texan doing here at a Kalamazoo Art Fair? Well, I didn't come straight from Texas. Okay. I did several shows en route to here, one in Indiana, one in Missouri, several in Tennessee, okay. several in uh, Florida. So it's kind of like a route, yeah. a circuit that I do in order to get here. But I was here last year, so we did so well, we wanted to come back. Oh, we're happy to have you back in Thank this you. area. It sounds like a, a traveling circus, though, going from place to place to place, setting up tents. Is that the life of an artist? Somewhat, yes. Actually, it literally is that way. For us, we're full-time RV. 
which means we have our RV and I have an area in the back of my RV that is dedicated specifically to art. So I basically paint while I'm in the RV and then when we get to different shows, we know, of course, we take out all the work. And it's kind of like a circus where we go from town to town and uh, display our work and sell our work. But I'm seeing, like, faces. I think there's a Ben & Jerry's uh, pint of ice cream that you painted. Where do you yes. get the inspiration for what you paint? Uh, Americana. Basically, anything that we all can relate to. Basically, um, it has a, a huge sort of southern feel to it um, as well. And, and the reason why I do that is because I want to give people something to, to smile about. I want to give people something to look at that they can be nostalgic about. Something that we can all relate to. We all, everybody loves Ben & Jerry's ice cream. So basically what I do is, and those are pop art, um, the rest of it, um, things like this or that, is called expressive realism. And it, there's a, a long history of, of uh, artists painting in that style too. Um, Thomas Hart Benton, Ernie Barnes, Richard Franklin. Um, and basically greats, what it does right? is, is, yeah, exactly. I like her. Um, basically what it is, is a, a playful way to look at art. You know, something that's kind of lighthearted. Again, something that we can relate to, something that um, in this sense has like sort of a nostalgic feel to it. Like if you look at the jacks up there, you know, that's kind of like an old school kind of thing that people used to play with, kids used to play with back in the day. The clamp on skates, you know, whatever's gonna give you that, that sense of nostalgia, you know, that's gonna make you, again, make you smile, make you think of happier times. That's what I try to do. I try to make my work give you a reason to sort of think back on better times, think back on, on fun times. You know, I'm big on things that, you know, kind of guide you in the direction that's gonna make you happy. That's basically what it's about. Wonderful. Well, you definitely have a, a proud patron in me, and you made me smile today, well, and you've you. uplifted my time. So thanks so much for chatting You're with me You're very, very welcome. I'm here with Val from Other Curiosities. Now, you are a 3D mixed media artist, but what do you say you work in again? Um, just, nature. Yes, just yes. nature. And you said it's easier to just paint it with a broad brush on that one so that it covers all of these amazing things in your tent. Leafs, bugs. Cute little skulls. I, that's the one I want to talk about is the cute little skulls. Cute Those little are skulls. so unique. How did you get into stuff like this? I, funny enough, my grandpa gave me a turtle. Turtle. Oh my goodness. And it went downhill from there. Okay. Or uphill. uphill I mean, we downhill. would all say uphill, but. <laughs> but it just, it started to grow the collection. It was antlers, it was bugs. It was, it went from a tin to a drawer to a box. And then I went to art school and I was like, canvas is boring. I think it's a reflection of who I am inside too. I'm a little out there, I'm a little strange, but I also like to connect with the outside world. So. I actually had a young girl walk by. She goes, oh my gosh, the bone person is here. <laughs> That's your identifier. That's a great, yes. great one to have. Yes, the bone person. It's so me. the bone person um, from Other Curiosities. Yes, That's absolutely. what we'll call you from now. <laughs> um, I know it's a hard question, but do you have a favorite you know, trinket or art piece in your booth right now you'd like to show us? Ooh. Right now, it's just this one, my big piece. Oh, that's gorgeous. Um, I jokingly call it Leaf Leaf. This will be Leaf Leaf the third. Okay. Because it's a leaf mantis, but I gold leaf. That is so. so beautiful. I love all the intricate details on it, too. I usually don't sit and do it all at once. Yeah. It's I take breaks, and I'll work on a different project because I like to pace myself, and I don't want to get bored or tired of the piece. I want it to feel good. My last question is just, you know, why is art important here in 2023? Art is going to be important until the world ends. Art is what makes us human. Art is what brings us together. Art is what drives people, honestly. And I think that a lot of us work, but we find joy in art and movies and music. And art is our joy as humans. Wonderful. Well, on that mic drop moment, I'll leave it there. <laughs> Miss Bones, thank you for, for chatting with us today. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm here with Trish from Moonlight Studio. Thanks so much for chatting with me today. Oh, of course, I'm happy to do it. I always love to share. Yeah, tell me about what we've got going on. Okay, so I've been doing shows about 30 years now. I've kind of changed my um, materials I work in, and uh, but I most enjoy the glass. Um, I've, you can see it more whimsical style and very colorful. And I just love working in the studio and creating new things, but also I love meeting the people, seeing what everybody enjoys. and Absolutely, yeah. this is the perfect type of event for that because you got people coming and going and yeah, you get to you share your craft with everyone. That's it, and you know, um, people are always usually in a pretty good mood. They come from quite far and they're just uh, 
you know, really looking forward to buying some art. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. When I was growing up and I took art classes, it was more, you know, sketching or painting. How do you get into something like glass? Oh, I took a class um, about 25 years ago, just a beginner class. And, um, and then I just did a lot of experimenting from there. Yeah. yeah, and 25 years later, yeah. you have Moonlight Studio. There it is, yeah. I quit my regular job and was able to stay home and watch my children and then at night work in the studio and then do art shows on the weekends. Wonderful, and that's such a commitment to, to take up your weekends and really show off everything you worked so hard for. Why is that important? Why is artwork important in our community? Oh, man, it's just um, when I don't do it, I feel less fulfilled and just to be able to be creative and have that um, outlet is, it's, I have to have it. <laughs> oh, spoken like a true artist, and we've got lots of artists around this area. Yes. How does it feel to just be in community with one another and see all of the great things? Oh, I, I love it. This is my like water cooler people. You know, you see the same artists, at, or not all the shows, but you know, there are, we're all friends. We're a big part of uh, the art community here in Kalamazoo and really all over. Wonderful. This might be a hard question. It's like asking you to pick your favorite child, but is there something in this booth that you're especially proud of? Um, I really love doing the um, stained glass windows. Oh, those are gorgeous. Um, and I just uh, am able to uh, just make each one different, and that's what I like. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much for chatting with us. Thanks for stopping. I appreciate the opportunity. <laughs>